I'm Brandy Agerbeck of Loosetooth.com, and I teach, write, and speak about drawing as your best thinking tool. And it is Tuesday. This is Studio Tuesday. Today, the studio is home, and I want to share one immediate thing happening tonight, and then three other things I got working, uh, got cooking on the, on all burners of the stove right now. <laughs> so the first thing is. <clears throat> this month I launched a program called Draw In Your New Year. Draw in your new year, new camera. I think this might not actually be backwards this time. Um, so Draw In Your New Year is a program where we get off the ro resolution roller coaster. So my old mode, New Year's, every year was to come up with like incredibly detailed, futzy resolutions that caused me to micromanage myself. And I don't like being micromanaged by no one. <laughs> so, you know, by January 11th, I'm off the, I'm just like off the resolutions, beating myself up, all that jazz. And um, so this program is walking you through four drawings, guiding you through four very accessible drawings that help you see and create your own big picture for yourself. So instead of these tiny tactical um, resolutions, you are shaping your, you're reflecting on your past year and shaping your new year through a series of drawings. Now, when I sit down and do this, I use a blank sheet of paper. I have no idea what that drawing is going to be, but I know that that kind of drawing can be scary, <laughs> very intimidating. So instead of, um, instead of the blank sheet of paper, what I've come up with is four sort of shapes, four different drawings you can make for yourself that I walk you through. So this is sort of a timeline drawing of uh, where you've been, where you want to go, what you want to celebrate a year from now, and then how do you get there in the middle. Uh, this guy is looking at your year as a cycle versus, you know, just kind of all those boxes on a calendar. Uh, this is in the uh, Idea Shapers, the book, The Idea Shapers, under the objective. So you get kind of an um, overview of that. This is a social map that really helps you see where and who you are spending your time and energy with. And um, this is also in the Idea Shapers under the connector. And then lastly, where you are at uh, personally, sort of how you feel um, in your own body, in your own skin, in your own mind, all that good stuff. So uh, the act now <laughs> is, <laughs> is that uh, tonight is the final second live session. If you want to make a date with yourself to sit down and make these drawings with me, um, sign up now at drawinyournewyear.com. And uh, there will also be, by Friday, I'll be posting standalone videos of each one of the set, um, uh, guiding you through each one of the drawings. So there'll be a video for the green drawing, a video for the blue drawing, a video for the orange drawing, a video for the yellow drawing. And the great thing is that even though this has really kind of um, begun as a New Year's thing, these drawings can help you any time of year, any time you need to kind of hit that reset button for yourself and you want to s spend some time reflecting and uh, reflecting on what's happened and shape what is to come. So that's the most immediate thing. Tonight, Tuesday, January 16th is the second final live session, two hours, 6 p.m. Chicago time. I know this does not work well for the Europeans. It works well for uh, folks in the Americas and folks in Asia Pacific who are, will be, that will be Wednesday morning. Um, so that is thing number one, which is draw, a, uh, draw in your new year. Uh, thing number two is a course coming up in March. I've talked about this before and happy to talk about it again. Drawing as a verb is an introductory course around visual thinking where we talk about how do you make meaning, make meaning, how do you make meaning for yourself and with groups. And this is a collaboration I'm co-hosting Drawing as a Verb with Mary Alice Arthur and Amy Lenzo and drawingasaverb.com. There you can find the intro video, lots of details there. And we'd absolutely love for you to join us for these four live sessions, Mondays in March. So we got a little time to think about it, but we'd absolutely love to have you sign up and join us. And that's Drawing as a Verb. Um, uh, the four session course in March with uh, Amy, Mary Alice and I, and um, really looking forward to that. That is going to be live calls where it's very interactive. The draw in your new year program, I will be live, but that's really kind of me guiding you through making these drawings, but you're having your own individual experience. So this isn't about a lot of sharing of your own stuff with other people. It's just making the space for yourself. 
whereas drawing as a verb is very much meant to be a um, very rich and uh, in-depth online conversation with each other in each of those four sessions. And again, if you go to drawingasaverb.com, you can find out the details around what, how each of those sessions are structured. So that's thing number two, burner number two. Burner number three is that I am madly working on an agenda for a private workshop I'm teaching next week. So this is a big juicy challenge of, um, I'm used to working with very small groups where it can be very, very direct feedback between me and the folks with me, for instance, a lab where it's just six people and me, and we can have one conversation. Next week's workshop is 60 people. And uh, they're actually, half the room is coming from the people side, um, and half the people are coming from the art and design side. So I think it'll be a really interesting um, group to be able to, one, work at that scale. So that's a good personal challenge for me, is to do more of these larger workshops. I've certainly done keynotes, where it's been a keynote adapted into um, uh, a keynote sort of, uh, uh, introducing and demoing the ideas, and then that moves into breakout groups. So that's something that's very scalable with large groups. Um, but when it comes to sort of like a, just a general introduction to graphic facilitation specifically, largest group I've worked with. So that's uh, agenda shaping is uh, burner number three today. And burner number four is writing an article for um, this new anthology coming out. And my, my chapter's late. <laughs> Anyone who's on that project is like, you're really, you're still working on that, huh? I'm like, yeah, I'm still working on it. Uh, but what I'm doing is, you know, with this opportunity, it's like, okay, what's the new piece that can I can add to the, my body of work? What's something I need to explore? What's been percolating? And what's been percolating is the, um, this idea of visual organization. So I just taught the lab in Australia in November, and I just taught it here in Chicago. And what comes up, like the, probably the number one reason people come into the lab is they want to they want to strengthen their listening skills, their organizing skills, and their ability to synthesize information. Um, so that you know that grouping of those skills is definitely a huge reason people come through the door for the lab. And um, so we've been really having these rich conversations around what does that mean, um, what are different levels of organization, how do you teach it, how do you build those skills. Because um, I definitely know that when I started out 20 years ago, um, you know, I was working at Ernst & Young using a process from a company called M.G. Taylor. And I contracted there for three years. And a couple of years in, they're like, hey, can you teach what you do? Because the third, so this particular environment was set up to run a three-day workshop. And the third morning always began with something called the synthesis conversation, which was this gorgeous open-ended conversation. It was my happy place. So I'm at a giant dry erase wall, which is basically kind of hugging the space that the plenary sessions are in. And um, it would be this, this, you know, again, very open-ended conversation where they've taken everything that kind of been percolating for the first two days and really work on, um, uh, they, they would be shaping by the end of the conversation how they were going to self-organize their work for the rest of the day. And um, I, again, I loved it. And it was because it was about organizing. It was about synthesizing. It was about listening for patterns and making connections. And oh, it's the best. So, um, you know, right off the bat, it was clear that one of my strengths was synthesizing. It's, you know, absolutely one of the ways that I'm wired um, and made me very happy to find this work. So even very early in my career, 20 years ago, folks were saying, hey, can you teach us how to do this? And at the time, <laughs> I didn't, I could do it, but I had no vocabulary. I no, had no language around it. So um, I remember that first time I was teaching back then, I said, uh, make more connections and you need more white space. Like that's really the only way I could talk about some sort of, you know, a couple of the kind of, um, um, markers of synthesis, that there's like sort of this connective tissue in the drawings. And there's more white space so you can get a sense of, you know, where are the groupings um, and get a sense of, you know, the flow in the drawing. Because if something's just crammed with stuff, it's really hard to navigate. So, but at the time it was make more connections, you know, ha have more white space within these drawings. So, um, so this anthology opportunity, I pitched it to the editors and our co-authors and I said, okay, so I can do this thing or I can do this bigger thing. 
Um, but I can tell you it's a bigger thing and I'm going to need more pages. And basically what I'm doing is um, coming up with an index of visual organization. Now, the first iteration of this is in the graphic facilitators guide. In the chapter called putting it all together, I have something called the synthesis spectrum. And that is five levels that go from a linear text list to high, high, high synthesis. Uh, those five levels. And I think it's a pretty solid model. And I really, really love the way, if I may say, I really love the way I um, illustrated it with an Aesop's fable in that book. Um, and I think this is just, a, you know, the next iteration on that. So in this, uh, so the chapter in the new anthology, assuming it gets done, assuming it's accepted, assuming you know, all the stuff works out, make no assumptions, um, is it will be uh, around the value of visual organization and really having this index. Now, in this case, it's, um, let's see if we can see this on the screen. This is a draft where I'm scribbling things out and like working. But basically, it's kind of this, uh, whoop, let's go the right direction here. Um, now we've got uh, seven levels, and then there's sort of three, three of those levels have kind of a, you know, 1.0 and 1B, 1A and 1B. Um, but it's going, again, it's going from linear list to super high synthesis and really trying to um, uh, create sort of names and examples of these different levels. A couple reasons. One is I see a whole lot of work um, out there that are what Anthony Weeks calls scattergrams. So in our first anthology, in the anthology that I was very happy to be a co-editor on, Drawn Together Through Visual Practice, uh, that came out summer of 2016. And uh, look up Visual Practice Book if you want to hear more about that guy. Um, yeah, Anthony Weeks, a uh, wonderful colleague and fellow Grinnellian, um, he wrote an article where he coined this term, as far as I know he coined the term, a scattergram. And it was seeing a lot of graphic recording and graphic facilitation work where you look at the chart and it's it's just a, a scatter, it's the all the ideas are just kind of scattered. And again, there's none of that connective tissue. There's no sense of flow. Um, it's what I call in the idea shapers making a poster. So you have a giant sheet of paper that's up on that wall, but you're filling it with postage stamps. It's all these little individual, you know, sort of data points, but there's, there's again, no connective tissue, no themes pulled out, no connections made. Um, and while it does capture the, the, the kind of points, the, the individual points, um, it's not making that meaning for the group. And uh, I, that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of what I see. And again, that's why I know folks are coming to me to work together in the lab is that they want to have more of that visual organization, that that's valuable. Um, and I personally, you know, there's there are some folks who say that that kind of organization is editorializing and it's not what you're there to do. I disagree. I think that definitely the amount that you can um, help them make meaning by clustering similar ideas together, by giving that cluster a label with a banner, um, you know, things like that, those are, um, that's the value you're adding. Uh, because we're all deluged with, you know, all those data points all the time. And um, to then reflect that in the, in the chart as, you know, here's all the data points, you know, deluge, um, it's, it's not in service of the client. It's, you know, the being able to organize, being able to label, being able to show structure and hierarchy in these drawings to give people um, a sense of, you know, laddering up in meaning, going down into detail, and laddering up in meaning and themes and overarching ideas, um, and also to help them navigate through the drawing is hugely, hugely valuable. So the, um, so again, that's what the chapter is. It's again, this next iteration of what I call the synthesis spectrum in the graphic facilitators guide in the putting it together chapter. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so that's what I'm feverishly working on. Uh, in this case, can kind of give you a peek. What I was doing was making these really simple uh, drawings, like, you know, just kind of uh, scribble text um, of samples. So, you know, you start out with a very basic list. Um, here we've got kind of a um, embellished list. Like this is very strictly, you know, sketch notes when it's a sketch note in like a Molsky notebook. This is like the embellished list where you're still kind of working really linearly um, filling up one page of the sketchbook, moving on to the next next uh, um, page of the sketchbook. And then the, you know, next level is, um, this is just testing my pen in the corner. Um, the next level would be um, popcorn. So you're breaking from the linear list and now scattering things across the page, um, but it gives you the opportunity to group similar things together. 
Um, so that would be popcorn. Over here I have little icons because the, the sort of 3B is picto popcorn or what I call iconitis. This is when, so here we have icons over here that were added to this graphic in Photoshop. This is when um, you come, you capture an idea and you're like, okay, now I need a symbol for that idea. I need an icon for that idea. And um, I call it iconitis because it gets you trapped in this very binary thinking between word and image. And um, it, yes, it's more illustrated than if it was just text, but I, my issue that I see with it is often when people get into iconitis mode, it's they've stopped listening and they've stopped organizing because they're getting really fixated on how do I translate this point into this, this other symbol. So um, uh, yeah, that's like, again, if I'm thinking the value is organization and capturing and listening, if I'm fixated on icons, I'm, I'm out of that mode. I'm not being present anymore because again, I'm getting um, tunnel vision on those icons. That's level three. Level four, um, like, so this is an example of the kind of a lot of what we see in graphic recording um, circles, and this is not quite focusing, but I think you get the idea. This is scattergrams. So this, you might have a, a title up in the corner, but then what you have here are all kind of just individual, you know, bits and pieces. And again, no sense of here's a grouping, here's a center of gravity within the drawing, or, you know, here's um, arrows or lines or shapes that kind of flow from one point to another. Um, that would be level four scattergram. Five is structured clusters, and this is actually just for the, these are just drawings on the same page for that spectrum you saw. Um, this is when we actually start getting into um, hierarchy and scale in the image ideas that the main ideas, the main ideas are big, the supporting ideas are smaller, and then you can, you know, keep going out from there. Um, so this is an example that's something that's very, very spatial and organized with no imagery whatsoever. It's all text, but there's a lot of support of the group in the meaning making by organizing the information spatially and making sure it's all nested and understood in these sort of um, clusters. The so that's level five. Um, nope, that's level, yeah, that's level five. That's level four, I think. Oh, geez, don't worry about it. All right, so the next one, <laughs> the next one is uh, structured uh, structured scale. So this is when you have, um, instead of everything being postage stamp size, you're actually scaling the information. Again, it's big ideas, big, smaller ideas, small. There's that connective tissue. There's all that good stuff. I'm getting used to this new webcam. Um, and in this case over here, this blue is, um, here's adding some of the synthesis into this drawing. So you have the capture of the idea of what happened live, but then you have these elements of laddering up, you know, laddering up into, you know, these are the overarching ideas added to this chart. So that is, these. this is five, so scatter, uh, clusters are four. Um, so scaled structure, and then the next one is um, integrated whole. So this looks a lot like the scaled structure, but you're actually making one single composition on the page. You're thinking about, you know, what, you know, you're, you're, you're um, like in this case, certain things are happening um, below this line. You know, the theme here is uh, food and eating and digestion and health and wellness and all that kind of good stuff. So here we can add all the things that are about sort of the food itself um, in this bottom half of the page below this line on the table with the plate. Um, and then anything that's around sort of like the psychology of eating or culture. So psychology of eating and culture around eating and food can happen um, above that line. So again, this is integrated whole where you're treating the whole page as one composition. And definitely when folks come to the lab and I do a dissection, which is where I uh, play a TED talk and or a podcast episode and I actually play it hit pause and tell exactly what I'm thinking. This is the kind of work I'm doing where I'm saying, okay, this is this is the, the, the scaffolding I'm putting down on the piece of paper. These are kind of these bets I'm making as I'm doing the work um, and saying, okay, this these are the areas on the page I'm working with. And then as that piece of content goes on, um, I'm sort of um, adding to this composition I've created for myself. And then lastly, uh, level seven is synthesis. So this is, again, those arrows are for the 
the model, but if you just look at this blue part in the center, synthesis is when it's all about, it's only and all about that laddering up to that um, overview. So in this case, this would be a graphic where if this was a two or three hour conversation, clearly it's not reflecting all the details of that conversation, but this could work as a really great communication tool. So if there were 60 people in the room having that in-depth conversation, if you put, you know, this kind of image in front of them, um, if you put this kind of image in front of the people in the room, they have the experience of the drawing. They understand where it came from. But if you put this drawing in front of somebody who wasn't there, it's not going to have the same meaning because they didn't experience it. But it could be that that group then works with somebody to create the summary graphic. So this is only the synthesis. And uh, again, this, when it's only the synthesis, it can work as a really great high level communication tool um, to bring out to a wider audience, but it does not have all the detail and nuance of the conversation itself. So that is the seventh level of, um, of synthesis. So that is what I'm working on for the chapter. And I hope that my editors will forgive my lateness because it's a pretty chewy thing I'm working on. Um, I'm really excited about it. And um, uh, yeah, so that's forming. Now that is uh, hopefully again, you know, all things work out will be in that anthology, but it's also something that's gonna be in the next book. So I'm not gonna say much more about that because um, I've learned from the Idea Shapers. The first book, The Graphic Facilitator's Guide, I totally squirreled away and just worked in my hidey hole and then said, boop, I've got a book. <laughs> and that was great. And then the second book, The Idea Shapers, I had this whole Kickstarter campaign and the book took way longer than I expected and was much, um, uh, yeah, it was intense. Uh, so that was much more public process creating a book. And I will tell you book number three will be a hidey hole project again. <laughs> I learned my lesson on book number two. It was way too stressful to make it sort of this huge public um, shared experience. So, uh, so yeah, that's burner number four is the anthology chapter. So again, that's just sharing where I'm at right now. Um, hopefully that model is um, piquing your interest and interesting to you. That's redundant, but that's okay. And um, if you are interested in sort of the first iteration of that, again, that is uh, the synthesis spectrum is in the graphic facilitator's guide in the putting it together, putting it all together chapter where I talk about synthesis. So uh, yeah, and then of course, if you're interested in, okay, so if you like these ideas, especially around the anthology chapter, I would say the two best chapters to look at in the graphic facilitator's guide are thinking and levels and the and putting it all together and then in the idea shapers i think the um two best chapters to look at are um the pyramid that's about hierarchy and scale and then um and there's a really great demonstration with the food pyramid in that which came from the lab that happened in the lab where you know on just emergent what the group asked for i demonstrated how i can fit excuse me seven layers of information in a small space because I'm making a lot of specific choices about that information from the start. It'll make sense if you look at the pyramid in the idea shapers. And then lastly, the integrator in the idea shapers where you're really looking at the page as a whole piece as a sort of like putting down that scaffolding to work with um, and building on top of that kind of shape that you that you um, begin with. So <laughs> This is actually a really good warm up because now my mind's like, you know, kind of in that mode to then sit down and work on this agenda for next week and work on my anthology chapter. So that is the report from the front. Um, again, welcome your questions, welcome your comments. Uh, number one thing right now, today on Tuesday, January 16th, is if you want to join me um, for the live session tonight, two hour session where I lead you through the four drawings of draw in your new year. <laughs> If you want to join me for Draw In Your New Year, go to drawinyournewyear.com and sign up there. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the call tonight because I really enjoyed Sunday's call. I really look forward to leaving it again today. And um, yeah, that's that's it from here. All right. So thanks for joining in, uh, tuning in for this Studio Tuesday. And I hope everyone is well and drawing. Take care.